Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Metal. I've got a really exciting tutorial for you today. We're gonna to be doing some mask tracking on our 360 degree footage, and that's gonna allow us to replace things in a shot that might be moving past the 360 degree camera. And it's really seamless, and it looks really good. However, I do wanna preface this, that this is more of an advanced 360 degree tutorial using Skybox Studio version two. So if you're new to 360 and Skybox Studio in general, you're definitely gonna probably wanna hold off on this tutorial and maybe come back to it a little bit later when you have a little bit more experience because we are gonna be moving through a few things under the assumption that you have some experience with 360 degree shots. Now, not only are we gonna be using Skybox Studio version two, we're also gonna be using a script from Mammo World called Mass Tracker Plus, and you can purchase this from aescripts.com. And it's a really good script for mask tracking and replacing things on shots. We're actually gonna be using it for our 360 degree shots today uh, with this technique. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So we're inside of After Effects. I've got a shot here, it's a zip line shot. And this is a really good example shot to use. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to a new composition. And I'll show you why I like this shot here. You can see I'm on the zip line and I'm just moving through the scene and there's a patch of brown dirt here. What it is, is kind of some tall grass and weeds and it kind of stands out a little bit from the other grassy terrain. So you can see as we move through the shot, this is gonna move past me and actually move behind me, and we can see that in the frame. And so this was a little bit distracting for me, and I, it was something that I thought that would be a very good candidate to replace in this scene. And you can see how this could kind of be like if you're in a car with a 360 degree rig, this is like something on the side of the road that you might want to get rid of. Now, other thing to note is that the more stabilized your footage is, the better this technique's gonna be, because again, stabilized footage is gonna work a lot better than non-stabilized, and that's one of the reasons I chose this shot, is because on this zip line here, uh, I'm actually fairly stable because I'm just riding on the cable. So if you had a drone shot or a shot on a car, you're gonna wanna make sure that footage has been stabilized. But those are the type of shots that I think are gonna be really ideal for this type of mask tracking and replacing things in your scene. So let's go ahead and get started on this process. The first thing I need to do is add a 2D edit using Skybox Composer. You can see I've got that open and docked over here. So I'm gonna select add a 2D edit. And you're gonna see it's gonna allow me to select the composition that I'm working with and currently zip line shot two. That's what I've got, so I'm gonna leave that selected. And for the comp width, I want this to actually be the width of my footage, so 4096. And these other options here, I can go ahead and leave those as is, and I wanna select add a 2D edit. So now you can see we're looking at this from a point of view perspective in edit one over here from Skybox Composer. I can hit C on the keyboard, and I can navigate around the shot here. Now this next part's very important that we need to do. So if I go ahead and scroll through the shot, you're gonna see that patch of dirt. And it, the thing that we need to do is we need to make sure this is visible in this field of view right here throughout the entire duration that we wanna replace it from. So what I mean by that is, I'll just go ahead and show you. So if I go back to the very beginning of my clip, you can see whatever's in the center here is less distorted than what's kind of near the edges because this field of view perspective we're looking at, it's kind of like a wide angle lens. So what we can do is we wanna to try to keep the area we wanna replace near the center of the shot the whole time. It doesn't have to be in the exact center, but the closer the better. And one thing that can kinda of help you with this process, come down here and you can turn on the title action safe. That's gonna add a little crosshairs right here in the middle. So that's a perfect target for us in this case. So I'm just gonna rotate this around with the camera and you can hit C on the keyboard to bring up this orbit tool. And what I wanna do is on my camera, I'm just gonna check down on this for transform and you're gonna see orientation. So we just need to go ahead and set a keyframe there when that's in the center. Now I'm just gonna move forward in my shot, just a couple seconds or so, about five seconds. And I just wanna reorient the camera now so that that patch of dirt is still kind of in the center or whatever you're replacing in your shot. So you can see that automatically created a keyframe there and that's what we want. So I'm just gonna move down a little bit more in time and rotate this again so that, that patch of dirt is back in the center. And the goal here is, is that the camera is constantly facing the area we want to replace. That way it's always uh, in the view for our edit one here. And that's gonna ensure when we do our mask tracking that it's always in the frame and the mask tracking will be able to pick it up. So you can see here, now I'm rotating and now that's back, putting that back toward the center. And let's go to the very last frame of the shot and keep that up in the center. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and select all these keyframes just by clicking and dragging. And I'm gonna go ahead and control click on those so it makes them round. So I think those are roaming keyframes now. And it just kind of smooths out the entire playback of everything here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick RAM preview so you can kind of see what's happening with this. 
hit zero on the numeric keypad. And now we can see that that patch of dirt is in the shot. So you can kind of pretend like we're our own cameraman on the zip line here. And we're just constantly wanting to keep this in the center field of view. Again, this is because when we track this shot, it'll make a little more sense later. We have to be able to see this in order to track it. So I think you guys get the general idea of what I was trying to accomplish here with that and just making sure that those are the round keyframes by control clicking on them will make the process a little bit smoother so you don't get any kind of jagged movements. All right, so I think that's looking really good. So what we need to do now is move back to the very beginning of our composition here and I'm gonna go ahead and close up the camera and I'm gonna turn off the title action save so we can see a little bit easier. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to actually add a mask on top of this footage right there over the dirt patch. So I'm gonna come up here and select the pen tool and select my footage. And one other thing to note, you don't wanna have on Roto Bezier, you wanna make sure that's checked off. And what I wanna do is just create a mask, kind of a square mask around this area I wanna replace. It doesn't have to be square, but in this case, I think that'll work out okay. So I'm just gonna click here and just kind of creating a mask. It looks like it's kind of on the surface of this area. All right, I think that looks pretty good. That'll give us something nice to track. Now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard for mask with that footage selected. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select none so we can still see our other footage because we don't really have to have that set for the time being. And now for that mask, I'm gonna go ahead and if I hit enter on that, it should allow me to rename it. So I'm just gonna name this grass and click away. Now I wanna right click on that mask and select track mask. And when I do that, it's gonna open up the tracker options here. This may open up in another place in your After Effects uh, work area, but there's where mine is located. I'm actually gonna move that down here just so it's a little bit easier for us to see. So now what we need to do, as long as we're at the very beginning of our composition, we can go ahead and play forward. That's gonna go ahead and track that mask on the surface of this shot. So I'll go ahead and click that. Make sure your method is also on perspective, by the way. So I'm clicking that, and now we can see it's tracking forward, and we can see that is tracking to the surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run through the process. I'll speed this part up uh, to when this finishes. All right guys, the mask tracking process is now finished. You can see it's added all these keyframes down here for that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll through the shot now so we can kind of see that. I'll go back to the beginning. And now you can see how that mask we created is tracked and is tracking to the surface there and looking correct. And you can see why it was important that we reoriented the camera view in this perspective so we could constantly see the area we wanted to replace. Again, that's because the mask tracker needed to see it. So this is looking really good. Now is when Mammal World's Mask Tracker Plus comes into play. So you can either purchase that or download a free trial again from aescripts.com. And once you have that installed, we need to go ahead and open that up. And you're gonna do that through the window option as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Window. And come down here and you're gonna see Mask Tracker Plus. And when I select that, it's gonna open up a dockable panel here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dock this up here next to the effects. So now we can see Mask Tracker Plus. And what we need to do is we need to load this mask data here we have into Mask Tracker Plus. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna select our footage and then we can just select that mask there. If you don't see that, just hit M on your keyboard. So I'm just gonna select the mask there, the grass mask. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna select Load. And that's gonna go ahead and load that tracking data. All right, that has been loaded. Now, what we need to do under this is we need to select Stabilize, Precomp, Skew, and Perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And we don't wanna apply this tracking data directly to our footage, so I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control D to duplicate it. So now we have another instance of that footage, and I'm just gonna hit Enter on that. I'm gonna rename it Patch. One other thing, before we apply it though, I wanna actually move back to the very beginning of the composition. And now I'm gonna come over here and I'm, with that selected, I'm gonna click Apply. And that's gonna allow us to select which instance of corner pin we want to apply to our footage. We have the option of CC corner pin, which will be with every After Effects install. Or we also have Red Giant Warp corner pin. If you have that effect installed, you could also use that corner pin effect. I'm just gonna go ahead and use CC corner pin because I know everyone's gonna have that. And I'm gonna click OK. And now we can see Mass Tracker Plus has applied that corner pin effect to where that mask was. Now what we can do now is we're, I'm gonna go ahead and select that patch pre comp down here. I'm just gonna double click on it. So don't click okay on this just yet. And now we can see this patch perspective here. 
But what I want to do is I'm going to come here to composition. I'm going to click that. And this gets a little tricky, so just make sure you follow along. I'm going to select new comp viewer. So now we have two different views. And now I'm going to go back to the edit perspective here. And the reason this is good is now I can have two different views. And I can kind of see in real time what's happening with the patch view from the Skybox Composer edit view. It's getting a little complicated, so again, make sure you just kind of follow along here. So what the benefit of this is, is now I can go ahead and move these corner pins around. And you can see how it's updating from this view. So I can go ahead and stretch this out to make it a little bit bigger of an area. And kind of remap it so that it looks like it's right on the surface there. So it looks like I'm a little bit far on that side. So I'm just trying to make this look as flat as possible and that I'm getting enough data that's gonna be good for me to kind of copy everything out on this. So as you can see, I'm just kind of flattening this up. So now that we've got that looking the way we want, go ahead and close this view. So now we're only dealing with one view again. And now on Mass Tracker Plus, I'm just gonna go ahead and select OK. And that's gonna apply that corner pin data. So now if we go ahead and scroll through here, that should be mapping correctly to our shot. So that looks pretty good. And so now we can see what's happening on this. I'm gonna double click on the patch pre-comp. And now we can see this from this view. So if I go ahead and scroll through here, you're gonna see this is really cool. The way it's just keeping that oriented right there on that patch. And you can actually see the perspective change as we move across it. However, it's staying right here in the shot where it is. It's not moving around. And that's gonna make it really easy for us to replace this now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work from about the center shot here because this is really when it's the closest to the camera. You can see how the resolution's a lot better here than it is right here when it's much farther away. So I'm gonna move right there to the middle. So what we can do now from this perspective is just use the clone stamp tool to stamp out this area. So I'm just going to right click and I'm gonna go ahead and select open layer. And when I do that, we can see we're looking at this from the actual footage view to use the clone stamp tool. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna select the clone stamp tool. There's my clone stamp options. You can adjust your brush size, whatever you wanna do. I might make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna hold alt and I'm gonna select an area of the shot where that area is not. And now I'm just gonna click and kind of paint that area out. And I might do another alt up here, just kind of painting this out. Just like we would paint out a tripod in Skybox Composer, exact same method. All right, so it looks pretty good, I've painted that out. Now one important thing to note is is that since we were painting this out from the middle of the comp, our clone stamp tool is not affecting the entire shot yet. So if I went back over this way, you can see it reappears and now it disappears. However, we can see the clone stamp area has been replaced and it looks quite nice. So what we need to do is we need to stretch those clone stamps out so they extend the entire length of the footage. Again, the benefit of working from the middle is we have more resolution right here at this point so we can kind of see what's going on. So I'm just gonna select my pre-comp here. I'm gonna open it up under effects, paint, now we can see all these different clone layers. So I'm gonna select clone one. I'm just gonna hold shift and select clone nine. So now all those are selected. And if I just highlight the corner here, we can see the double arrows appear. And I'm just gonna click and drag. So it's gonna extend those all the way out. So just drag those all the way to the beginning. And now if we look at this, it should be covering throughout the entire shot. And it does appear to be so. So now we can go ahead and go back into edit one. And now we can see that dirt area has been replaced. And what's even more interesting is that this has been mapped correctly for the perspective. So you can see as I scroll through the shot here, there is no trace that that was ever there. And this is pretty remarkable. I'm even looking for areas where I can see where it's been clone stamped out and it's difficult to see if you can even see it at all. So that's the major benefit of this effect. And just, if you don't believe me, we can go ahead and turn this on and off and we can see where it used to be. So that's really cool how that's mapping correctly on top of the surface in this 360 degree shot. Now, all we have left to do is go ahead and select open output render. And when we do that, if we go back here to the very beginning of our shot. We're gonna notice if we zoom in here, that dirt area we replace is nowhere to be seen in the shot. And it is formatting correctly. So it would be right in this area where it was. And we can just come back up here to the project and I'll open up the original shot here. You can see there it is, bigger than Dallas. And we go back to edit one. 
or actually back to the output, nowhere to be seen. And so now in theory, we could just go ahead and render this out from our output view. So I'd come over here and select the output view, render queue, add it to it, and select my render options here to render it out. In my case, it's gonna be a QuickTime Photo JPEG, 95% quality under format options here. Audio on auto and click OK. And then we can just render this out. And now we've went ahead and done a mask track to replace something moving in our shot and it's tracking it to the surface. In theory, there's a lot more you could do with this effect. It's just a nice kind of tutorial demonstrating the power of it. So if I go back in here to edit one, in theory, in this patch, we could add in something, we could add in something like some text or something flat or something we wanted to map seamlessly onto this service, like a crowd of people if we shot on a green screen or something like that, anything really. Uh, the sky's the limit in theory, but obviously replacing the ground or something like that's gonna be the easiest because this is mapping flat on top of the footage and I'm just copying kind of the perspective view around it. So really I think this is gonna be ideal for doing kind of patch mask tracking replacements like that but uh, there are other possibilities that could be done with it. Uh, just again, the results from this were stellar. So definitely wanted to share this and I think we're all pretty excited about it. So again, make sure you check out Master Tracker Plus on AE Scripts, download that, use it in conjunction with Skybox Studio version two. And again, guys, I hope you try out this effect for yourself. This is a little bit more of an advanced technique. So once you are a little more familiar with 360 footage, it will definitely be something you want to explore. All right guys, this has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.